says the gadget show has done just about every VR headset going in order to follow the progress of virtual reality as it seeks to immerse us in ever more realistic digital worlds. And now VR is becoming even more lifelike because some companies are using photorealistic environments for us to explore rather than computer-generated ones. It's a process known as photogrammetry. While most VR relies on computer-generated environments, photogrammetry uses actual photographs to create scenes and the objects within them. This process results in even more convincing experiences that people can explore and learn from as Otis found out when he sampled an early example of the technology. Bordering on the emotional, actually. One of the leaders in this field is River, which stands for Reality in Virtual Reality. Though only six years old, they've already developed groundbreaking technology that recreates real-life accident sites the emergency services can use to improve their investigative skills. Not content with that, they are now branching out, looking at historical sites. And today, they've asked me to assist them with their latest project here at Guy's Cliff House in Warwick. Spooky would be an understatement. Their aim is to provide a digital recreation of the property as it is now, so that people can take a realistic tour without ever leaving their living rooms. One of River's founders, Alex Harvey, told me more. There must be some challenges of going about doing this. Uh, it is a huge place with crazy geometry, so we have to take thousands and thousands of photos to make sure we cover everything from every angle. But at least they've managed to make that process a bit easier. So, Alex, tell me about this rig that you've designed. So, this rig speeds up our photogrammetry workflow. Previously, if this was a one-camera rig, I would have to come up to a wall yeah. and we'd have to do photogrammetry at an angle and we'd have to walk along and do lots of photos at one angle and then do lots of photos at another angle. But now, we've got six cameras rather than one. So, we can just walk along. Now, these cameras, they look like they're at very specific angles. Um, why is that? The angles of the cameras are really important to make sure that we have the correct overlap for the photogrammetry software. The images need to overlap so that the software can recognise common patterns in the pixels and stitch the pictures together. Next, we are off to Cloister's Cave, a man-made grotto beneath the main house that I was going to photograph today. OK, so cameras are on. So you put your thumb over the button and hold down lightly and push down. Yeah. That focuses, and then you press down again. All six cameras then trigger simultaneously. Right, so we need to keep parallel with the wall and then step along. That's it. And then step left and then press. Step left. So it's very simple to use. My only criticism would be it's quite heavy to hold for a long time. So I think the next version will probably add some sort of cradle or harness to give it a bit more support. The Canon 100D cameras use an 18 megapixel sensor, which is big enough to capture the detail required without amassing more data than River's computers can process. Okay. okay. Right, let's go and see how these look. 20 minutes later, and I had obtained a stack of photos. However, a handheld rig can't provide all the answers when you're trying to digitally recreate something the size of this place. This DJI Mavic 2 drone has a 20 megapixel camera, and it's shooting stills just as I did, because video is too compressed to provide the detail River required. However, if video resolution gets high enough, then we could definitely start taking frames from that video and it would uh, allow us to do this quite a lot quicker. But sometimes cameras of any type simply won't work. For example, in the dark. And that's where a laser scanner, like this Leica RTC360, plays its part. Its three sensors measure the distance the laser travels and from this constructs a detailed 3D recreation of a space in under two minutes. Armed with all my data, I now need to do something with it. So it was off to River's offices nearby. So you've uploaded all my photos. How have you got to this point? We've now got like 2,000 images. So the computer recognises the photos and then stitches them together. Yeah, because it sees that every image has 70% overlap from the previous image and we can keep going through for as many images as, as we've got. 
It's basically like building a giant digital jigsaw puzzle, and the software that's doing all this is called Reality Capture. It's very clever, and it does that all automatically. But that's not the end of the process. In order to create a lifelike texture and explore it, the software then creates a 3D map underneath the photos. This structure is made up of polygons, each of which has a series of spatial reference points. And we're talking lots of polygons. At the moment, it's made up of 780 million polygons. Wow. But this creates a problem. And this is too many polygons. We need to decimate the polygons, okay. allowing the VR headsets to handle the scene a lot better. So you're having to simplify it because at the moment the VR headsets can't handle that much data. You'd think this would wreck the VR experience, but there's loads and loads of detail that's simply not needed. In fact, this process shrinks the volume of data by over 99% without any noticeable effect. After a few finishing touches, my photorealistic Cloisters Cave is ready and waiting. Well, it looks like virtual reality is coming forward leaps and bounds, isn't it? It really is. And actually, it's really interesting doing the whole process within a day of, you know, going out, taking the photos, and then seeing how they actually make that into a VR world. I mean, it must have been mind-boggling being up so close and personal with that. Yeah, and what's great is that you see, doing something like that, you're actually sort of archiving exactly what Cloister Cave looked like in 2020. And I've brought the VR experience along for you yes. to all try. Yeah. Uh, so you'll find a HTC Excellent. Vive under your chair. Uh, I'm looking forward um, to this. Right, welcome to Cloister Cave, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to see my handiwork. Uh, if you want to, you can just teleport about. Georgia, you're looking glamorously realistic. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm so glad you noticed. Yeah, um, I headed down to 4D Max, who did photogrammetry of my whole body. So it gives this incredibly realistic appearance of my avatar. Your lips aren't moving when you talk, though. Oh, <laughs> that, that's the next evolution. I'm round the back here, and I found a big red button that says alert. Don't press it. Definitely press it. I think I should, don't no, no, you? No, no, don't do it. Pressing the button now. Oh, ah! oh, oh wow! Oh, it's our studio. I'm going to jump in. Oh, yes. wow! Come on, I know this place. So it's the Gadget Show studio inside the cave. How cool, how cool is brilliant. this? Look at the little statue of me. Yes. The little That's bobble it. head. It's just so realistic. I mean, that is the power of photogrammetry, is that you can just take photos off the set and then we can properly interact with it. Mm.